The purpose of this video is to introduce binary outcomes and odds ratios. And some of you are going to be using binary outcomes in your models. And also in this module, I'm going to be using binary outcomes to introduce some of the theory. So we need to get acquainted with binary outcomes. So let's start with where we've been before. And you've seen this slide several times now. Let's just review it. So what we're looking at here is two continuous variables. We have variable A and variable B, and these diagrams represent all of the data that are in our data set. And here we can see that as variable A increases, variable B tends also to increase. Here, as variable A increases, variable B tends to decrease. If we were to move through the individuals in our data set and look at the pattern, we would see that variable A and variable B in this first instance are moving together up and down. And in the second instance, we would see that they're moving in opposition to each other. In both of these situations, we can hypothesize one of these causal relationships between variable A and variable B um, that is the reason behind the association we see between the variables. Now, if the line is flat like this, then there is no clear pattern in the data. There's no association between variable A and variable B. And so we hypothesize none of these causal relationships between variable A and variable B. That's what we've done already. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to switch from using variable A and variable B to using exposure and disease. So var variable A is now going to become E for exposure, and variable B is going to become D for disease. And so down here in the causal hypotheses, we've also changed A and B to E and D. Now one thing we've seen already is this picture, and I just want to review it very quickly. This came from our video called What is a Cause? And let's say that the outcome here is the binary outcome that I'm planning to model, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Actually, the disease down here we can say is COPD. So here we have, we want to know is the exposure a cause of the disease? And my exposure is going to be uh, tobacco smoke exposure, smoking. Why don't we call it lifetime smoking? That's the exposure variable here. And we said if we want to think about if lifetime smoking is a cause of COPD, then we have to have a population in mind. And we're using NHANES data, so we're looking at the non-institutionalized U.S. population. And we said that the way to think about a cause is to imagine if the entire United States population was not exposed to lifetime smoking, they were non-smokers, and the risk of COPD was 10% in the population. And if we thought about the entire population being lifetime smokers, that the risk of COPD would be 40%. And we said that if we thought that the risk of COPD would in fact be higher if everyone was a, was a lifetime smoker compared to if they weren't, that we could go ahead and make the hypothesis that lifetime smoking is a cause of COPD. And we noticed that we actually never have data like this. We never have this situation where everyone is a non-smoker and we never have the situation where everyone is a lifetime smoker. And we certainly don't have both situations at the same time because how can everyone be simultaneously a lifetime smoker and a non-smoker? So what our data actually look like are down here. We have some individuals who are lifetime smokers. We have some individuals who are never smokers. And we use these lifetime smokers that we observe to represent what would happen in the population if everybody was a lifetime smoker. And we use these individuals in our data who are non-smokers to represent what would happen in the United States population if everyone was a non-smoker. And you remember that we talked about the assumption of exchangeability, which meant that we're making a kind of assumption that we could take these individuals, these individuals who are not exposed, who we observe, 
and we can exchange them for what we would have seen in these individuals who are exposed to smoking had they in fact not been exposed to smoking. And likewise, we can take these individuals here who we observe were exposed to smoking and we can exchange them for what we would have seen in these individuals had they in fact been lifetime smokers. Now I want to change the way we are drawing this diagram a little bit. And what I want to do is use the yellow and red colors to indicate whether a person had the disease or not. So if a person was not diseased, then I'm going to use yellow. And if a person was diseased, then I'm going to use red. Now for exposure, if somebody was exposed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an orange box around the circle. So all of these individuals over here have orange boxes, so these are all exposed, and all of these individuals over here don't have an orange box, so they are not exposed. So no is just the absence of uh, an orange box. So here you can see that the red is indicating that 10% of the population actually have COPD, and here the red is indicating that 40% of the population has COPD. And we can see down here that that is the same rate that we see in our uh, individuals who are not exposed to smoking, and 40% is the rate of disease that we see in our individuals who are smoking. So now let's look at how we relate a binary outcome to the different causal hypotheses. Now what we have up here in the top we have the exposure variable down here, and we have one column for not exposed and one column for exposed. So in the example here, you can say that these individuals in this column, these are the smokers, and these individuals are the non-smokers. And we can think that with the assumption of exchangeability, these individuals who are exposed to smoking, they represent what would happen in the entire population if the entire population was exposed to smoking. And these individuals in the no, they represent what would happen in the population if nobody was a smoker. And over here, we have the disease variable. In this example, it's uh, COPD. And what we have on the axis here is the percentage of individuals who have COPD, okay? Now this looks a little bit like what we saw before when we were looking at two continuous measures and we were going through individuals one by one and looking at the pattern. You shouldn't be confused by that. This is something different than that, right? So this is actually a representation of the collective data. This is not a single individual's data. So this is similar to when we looked at the continuous variables when we have have multiple dots representing the two variables and we had a line going through them. Here what we have instead is we have a percentage. So the percentage is what is um, indicating what's happening at the population level. Okay, And so what we have here, this is just like the diagram that we saw previously. Here we have when everybody is a smoker, the COPD, there's 40% who have COPD. And when nobody is a smoker, 10% have COPD. That would look like this. Here we have when people are exposed to smoking, a higher percentage of them have COPD than if they are not smoking. Now here what we have is that when individuals are exposed, the percentage of them who have the disease, the outcome is actually lower. So here it's higher, here it's lower. Now in both of these situations, we can hypothesize one of our three causal uh, relationships, the three basic causal relationships. And when uh, the percentage who have the outcome is the same among those who are exposed and not exposed. That means there's no association between the variables. And we hypothesize that none of these causal relationships are in existence. Now let's move a little bit looking more closely at how we might collect data in a cross-sectional study. So that's what we have with the NHANES data. So we start by recruiting a representative sample and then we make measurements. And so we measure both their exposure and their disease. And so then we uh, then know the, the values of their variables 
on those measures. And then what we can do is, is we can put them into a kind of two by two table. And so we sort them by exposure and disease. Here is exposure, no and yes. Here is uh, disease, no and yes. So you can see all of the individuals who are not diseased are yellow. All of the individuals who are diseased have uh, are red. And everyone who is exposed has an orange box. And those who are not exposed have no orange box. And so then basically we can just count the individuals and put them into a two by two table that looks like this. So we have one individual who is uh, not exposed, but who has the, the disease and so on. So if we want to relate this back to our ideas about the causal hypotheses, then what we need to do is, is to calculate the percentage of individuals who have the outcome among those who are exposed and those who are not exposed. So this should be very straightforward. Among the not exposed, we have one individual who has the disease out of a total of six. So the percentage is one divided by six. And among those who are exposed, we have four individuals with the disease out of a total of six. So the percentage is four divided by six. And we get our uh, drawing like we always see and it looks like this and so then we can hypothesize one of these causal relationships. So hopefully this is pretty intuitive. Now one thing I want to say though is that we're not going to be using the percentage for binary outcomes. We're going to be using something called the odds and you might or might not have been introduced uh, to this in a previous class. And the reason we're going to use the odds is that it has some good mathematical properties uh, relative to the percentage. Um, those mathematical properties aren't important for our purposes. So what we need to do is we just need to know how to um, calculate the odds, how it's defined, and how to work with it. So to calculate the odds of disease among those who are not exposed, we look in the column for those who are not exposed. That's this group here who are circled in red. And the way we calculate the odds of disease in this group is to take the number of individuals who have the disease, in this case it's one, and we divide it by the number who don't have the disease, in this case it's five. So the odds of disease among those not exposed here is one divided by five. Now the percentage, we would use the total number of individuals, so that's how the odds and the percentage differ from each other. Now if we are going to calculate the odds of disease among those who are exposed, we would do it the same way. We would take among those who are exposed, that's this column here, circled in red, and we would take the number who have the disease for and divide it by the number who do not have the disease. So the odds of disease among those exposed is 4 divided by 2. So if we are going to relate the odds to our uh, causal hypotheses, we do it in the same way. We just basically look at the odds of the disease among those who are exposed and compare it to the odds of disease among those who are not exposed. And if they are different than each other, either with higher odds of disease in this exposed group or conversely higher odds of disease in this not exposed group, then we can go ahead and hypothesize the different causal relationships. Now one thing that we usually do is that we calculate something called the odds ratio. And basically all we are doing to calculate the odds ratio is to take the odds of disease among those who were exposed, that's this number here, and we divide that by the odds of disease among those who were not exposed, that's this number here. So in this case the odds ratio would be 4 divided by 2 divided by 1 divided by 5, and this comes out to 10. Now that's a really big odds ratio. We usually don't see odds ratios this big in practice, although I have seen some in the literature that big. Um, so, But this would be the odds ratio, and, and what the odds ratio does is a kind of shorthand way to um, see the, the magnitude of the difference between uh, the odds of disease in the exposed and the not exposed. And if we want to relate the odds ratio back to our ideas about um, the different uh, basic causal hypotheses. Um, basically, if you have an odds of disease that is higher among those who are exposed, then your odds ratio is going to be greater than 1. And if you have an odds of disease that's 
greater among those who are not exposed, then your odds ratio is going to be smaller than one. So if your odds ratio is bigger than one or less than one, then you have an association between your variables and you can hypothesize one of these basic causal structures down here. If the odds ratio is equal to one, that means that the odds of disease is the same among those who are exposed compared to those who are not exposed. There's no association between the variables, and so you would hypothesize that none of these basic causal relationships between the variables exists. So the things to remember from this video are one, how the odds ratio is calculated, and two, if the odds ratio is greater than one or less than one, then the variables are associated and you can hypothesize one of the basic causal structures relating the two variables.